All right. Um, my name is Joel Hammett, um, as I already mentioned. As many of you know, uh, I grew up in a Christian family, Christian parents, godly home atmosphere. Um, everyone must be know that. Um, as most kids in similar situations, I knew my whole life that it was good to be saved, and even seriously, I was afraid to go to hell, that terrible place where bad people go. And then imagine how cool it would be to tell people, I'm saved, I have a testimony. I remember one child, this almost comical profession I made when I was about six years old. I was listening to a Patch the Pirate, and in the program, one of the kids got saved. Another girl I knew had recently gotten saved and given a testimony before she got baptized. So I knelt down by the side of the bed and prayed what the kid in the program had prayed, and then got up back on the bed and thought to myself, now, what's my testimony? Unfortunately, that's the way I viewed salvation for years, even though I found more spiritually correct ways to express it as I grew older. Fast forward a few years to 2014. That was in about 2010. In 2014, um, one Sunday, first my dad preached a message there in South Africa, and then we came home and tuned into the live stream, and Pastor Roland also preached a message on hell. After the evening live stream, I asked my dad if we could talk. I was scared of hell, and knowing enough Bible lingo, I described it as conviction to my dad. That evening, I prayed a prayer, and I thought I got saved. Unfortunately, there was no realization of the extent of my sin, the magnitude of God's love, and the incredible price Christ paid to reconcile us. Needless to say, that profession was false. Nothing changed in my life. I knew how to act good and fool everyone into thinking I was saved. At least I thought I was smart enough to hide it from everyone. As time went on, however, it became evident I was not saved. Sin didn't cause pain in my life unless I got punished. No part of me didn't want to sin. I enjoyed sinning. A true mark of salvation and also true conviction is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is when you feel pain because you know you hurt God and broke his law. Mine was only worldly sorrow. Sorrow caused only because I was caught and punished. This state of things led to an utter disregard of God and his word. I just didn't care. If something pleased me, consider it done, even if it was sin. 1 John 2.15, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This led to increasingly worse sins, things especially coming to a head in 2017 when we came back to the States for a furlough. I was strong-willed, unsaved, and entering the new world of the youth group, friends, time away from parents, away from home. Um, that was a bad combination. I was disrespectful at home to my parents as they tried to curb my spirit, strong-willed spirit. They saw me acting two different ways, around the home Joel and out with friends Joel. They would correct and punish me for being sinful in the home and I would rebel. In this state of mind, I started looking for other things to fill my mind, to push God and my parents out of my mind. And I succeeded for a while. I distanced myself from my parents, closing communication between us. I filled my thoughts with worldly, carnal thoughts, pushing God away. But I still had to maintain my good image in the youth group. Everyone had to think I was saved and spiritual, so I did all the good things. I prayed, I went to Bible studies, I talked about God. At camp, I would go forward and act like I was convicted over the message. Around this time, I had some health issues, and my dad began talking to me about salvation. As far as the fruit of salvation was concerned, there wasn't any. Though man can't judge the heart, there should be a very obvious change in one's life when he gets saved. My spiritual youth group default was, oh yeah, I'm saved. I even convinced myself that I was spiritual. I convinced myself that my only problem was my circumstances. My dad challenged me with verses like 2 Corinthians 7.10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. I eventually realized I wasn't going to fool him, so I tried to get him to stop pestering me. And after a while, he did. He asked me if I would like to keep talking or if I wanted some time to think. I told him to stop so I could have some time to think, which was really just a way to make him stop. He knew this and never really stopped, for which I'm not thankful. A month or two went by in this state, stage of me knowing I was unsaved and not caring. Eventually, though, some sin in my life became revealed to my dad. These were sins that I knew were wrong and would have to go before I could get saved. So I kept them and rejected salvation until they were found out. As my dad began to work with me through these sins, he also continued trying to establish an open, communicative relationship with me. 
He had always worked toward a relationship, but I had no desire to have a close relationship while I was hiding sin in my life. Now that I had no sin to hide, he continually urged a strong relationship with me. Then I just wished he would stop, but now I realized that it was his prodding that eventually led to my salvation. He continued to challenge me with salvation, and I was finally coming to the end of my rope. I once told my dad, if I'm not saved, I want to be. I still wanted my previous profession of 2014 to be genuine somehow, some way, so I didn't have to go through that again. But I was realizing more and more that it was not. Summer camp came and went in 2018 with still no change in my spiritual life. At this point, I knew it was right to want to be saved, but now I wanted a powerful experience. That extremely pointed message on sin and the gospel where the preacher almost went hoarse, the testimony that elicited amens all over the auditorium, maybe even at summer camp when I could go forward at the invitation in front of all the kids and make a profession, say I got saved at camp. At this point, the motives were wrong, though I believe I truly wanted to be saved. However, in August of 2018, I had the opportunity to attend the daily opening chapels for EBA. These messages were strongly focused on obedience of the gospel, and one message preached by Pastor Gable spoke directly to me. He was preaching from Romans 10 on the subject of Israel's disobedience. He compared us kids in EBA to Israel. We had the same spiritual heritage of spiritual ancestors and knowledge of the Bible. He said that we had heard the gospel and were delaying, and if we delayed to obey it, we were in effect thumbing our nose at God. He said if you reject God too long, he may stop sending conviction. He's long-suffering, but he won't be provoked forever. I asked to speak to Pastor Gable after that message, partly because I was still laboring under the stereotypical salvation experience template that everyone had. Everyone went and talked to a pastor after the message. That's just the way it worked, right? However, the Lord used that talk with him to convince me to accept Christ as my Savior. I knelt there with him, and I asked the Lord Jesus to come into my heart. I asked Christ to cleanse my sin and create a clean heart in me. According to Romans 10.13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believed God's promise, and I believe he saved me. This time there was a change in my life. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore if any man is in, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When I sin now, I feel pain because I realize that I hurt God with that sin. Sin isn't something that I enjoy necessarily because there's conviction that comes after. Bible reading is no longer a task but a relationship. I spend time with God in prayer, strengthening my relationship with Him. I now strive to be respectful to my parents and heed their instruction. I see many other areas of my life that God has changed and He continues to perform the work of sanctification. Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Christ Jesus. I've worked through several Christian discipleship books, as well as weekly studies with my dad. Please pray for me as I seek the next step of obedience to God and grow in his grace and knowledge of him. Amen. 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 Joel, are you sure you're safe? Yes. And Joel has been interviewed and recommended for church membership tonight. That's a motion. We need a second, and uh, okay, we'll take that. <laughs> and all those in favor of seeing Joel become a member of the church tonight by way of baptism, please signify by saying amen. Amen. Amen, amen. so ordered. Joel, my son and my brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of uh, this Lehigh Valley Baptist Church, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of Christ's death, and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen.